Hey, I just want to thank all my new subscribers who just subscribed to the channel. Thanks to uh, Pradumna and his uh, I Love Mayapur channel, along with his wife and two kids. I'm really grateful to you. Uh, I'm just starting this channel or starting to take it seriously, like like he does, for example. And the fact that you know several hundreds of you subscribed to my channel in the last like 48 hours is is a testimony to how nice you guys are and how grateful I am to you. So um, having said that, you know, thank you. And my way to thank you right now is to read to you um, a couple of chapters from chapter four of the Bhagavad Gita. Right now I'm translating, we're actually not really translating, I already did that. I'm editing a French translation of the Bhagavad Gita study guide by one of my main spiritual teachers, His Holiness Ridayananda Das Goswami, who uh, also is known as Dr. Resnick, who has a PhD in Harvard, from Harvard University in Sanskrit and Indology studies, and who about four years ago wrote this really, really cool Bhagavad Gita study guide, which some, of fr some friends of mine translated into French because I'm half French. You know, I'm Californian, I'm also Parisian, and I'm fluent in French, and so I took it upon myself to, to help translate this really nice book. And right now I'm editing it. I'm doing the last edit. It's really tedious work. And so I want to read to you, the, in English, of course, the, a couple of chapters from the fourth chapter, because this is where I happen to be at. The fourth chapter is not my favorite chapter. I mean, I guess all chapters of the Bhagavad Gita are my favorites. And this is important for you, because most of you who are watching this have some sort of root in, in Hindu culture, in, in Vaishnava or Sanatan Dharma. And as you know better than I do, you know, the Bhagavad Gita really has a central, central piece, a position, you know, in the, on, on the stage of the Vedic texts or the, the Hindu quote-unquote uh, worldview. And, and I say quote-unquote because I'll make a video another time about the word Hindu, how the word Hindu is, a, is sort of a misnomer in the history of that word. But anyway, suffice it to say, thank you so much for subscribing. And here are a few verses from uh, Lord Krishna speaking to Arjuna from the fourth chapter. The Lord said, I taught this imperishable yoga to Vivasvan. Vivasvan told Manu. Manu spoke to Ikshvaku. King sages, you know, Raja Rishis, king sages thus learned it as received in disciplic succession. After great time here, it was lost. Yoga Nashta, Parantapa. Today I teach you this same ancient yoga. Indeed, this supreme mystery, for you are my devotee and friend. So you guys, you see, like in this Mayapur, I love Mayapur channel, and there's so many other channels around the world where people like me, you know, who are coming from the West, from Europe, from America, from Canada, from Australia, are really um, embracing the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita, the teachings of the Upanishads, the teachings of the Puranas, who are, you know, totally believing in reincarnation and the soul and in the Mahabharata, et cetera, et cetera. And that should make you like impressed. That should be like, wow, you know, and that, that should that should inspire in you the desire to also become familiar with the Bhagavad Gita. I mean, if someone like me from California and Paris knows the Bhagavad Gita, why shouldn't you also know and live according to the Bhagavad Gita? Here's a few more verses. Arjuna said, so this is Arjuna now speaking, your birth is later, Vivasvan's birth earlier. How is it that at first you taught him? The Lord said, both you and I have passed through many births, Arjuna. I know them all. You do not, scorcher of foes. So in other words, Arjuna is like us. He's a, a soul. Of course, he's a really special soul, but he's a soul nonetheless. And souls uh, reincarnate life after life after life in this, in this samsara cycle that we're in, right? On the other hand, Krishna is not a soul like us. Krishna is the Paramatma, he's, you know, Purushottama, he's the Supreme Lord, literally. And his body is not made of, you know, flesh and bones like ours, and he happens to have a soul inside like we do, or like we are inside a physical body. No, Krishna's body is completely spiritual. 
100% spiritual. And why do I say this? You may say, like, I don't care about that, but th that's really important because in India, there's so much confusion about the identity of Krishna. I mean, it's crazy how much speculation there is about Krishna. And there's so many spiritual leaders in India who think that Krishna was just a great yogi, some great, you know, even some, some yeah, so just some, a great yogi at best, you know. But no, according to the Gita itself, you know, Aham Sarvasya Prabhavo Matak Sarvam Prabhartate, I'm, Krishna is really the supreme person. And therefore, he remembers every time he comes to this world because he's omniscient. Whereas Arjuna, as much of a pure soul as he may be, forgets each time he incarnates into a different body. Now, Arjuna, as I said, is in a different category. He's still a soul, but he's an eternally liberated soul. Whereas you and me, uh, most likely, are just ordinary jiva souls. In other words, small little souls who have you know, rejected Krishna billions of lifetimes ago and who are struggling in this reincarnation cycle, life after life after life after life, for God knows how many lifetimes. And now we have a chance. Now that we have a human body, you know, as the Vedas say, Atatto Brahma Jigyasa, now that you have this human form of life, now that you have incarnated in this, into this human form of life, now is the time to, to inquire about the truth. Now is the time to, to, to find out who you are spiritually and ultimately how to have liberation how to have mukti, how to have moksha, how to get out of this reincarnation, which is full of suffering, ultimately, as Krishna says, dukhalaya mashashvatam, and, uh, and go back to Vaikuntha, back to home, back to Godhead, as Srila Prabhupada, the founder of, of ISKCON, used to say, this famous statement, back home, back to Godhead. In other words, back to our original uh, abode in the kingdom of, of Vishnu or Krishna, uh, to be eternally enjoying with him. All right, so once again, thank you for this really nice gesture on your part to have subscribed to this channel. I'm really, really grateful to you, and I'll try my best to make better and better videos uh, for you, know, you guys in India and also people all over the world who may subscribe to this channel. And, uh, and until then, um, Hare Krishna. Thanks again.